Hello, hello, welcome. Um, in this video, as you've seen by the title, I'm going to explain to you how I hacked the car play. Um, so, you've got to be familiar with it. You're familiar with car play. You've seen the photo, you've seen the preview. Um, so let me quickly show you the app in the car. We'll do that now. Hello, so I'm just filming this bit here where you're seeing the car play interface. So I can't show you much because, of course, I'm filming on the phone that's showing you this. But essentially, as you can see here, I've got the application, open the application up. I've got Google open at the moment, but you could put whatever content you want there, whether it be a screen recording of the phone I'm on by using the screen recording extension or whether it be a YouTube video or I don't know, any, any web browser of all content that can go here and it'll work while the car's in motion or, well, actually, realistically, you could put any view here. You can put whatever you like here. I allow you to put a web view here and stuff. I would not advise you using it while the car's driving, but there's nothing stopping you. Um, but yeah, this is kind of it. This is kind of the code. Well, not the code. This is kind of the view. This is what it looks like. It works fine when you swap between views and stuff like that. It stays there. Uh, there are sidebar blocks so that you hide, so you don't miss content that appears here and stuff like that. All that sort of stuff is there in the app. Um, yeah, so get at the app and see how I built it. Right, welcome back. Hopefully you saw the code, and not the code, but you saw the application in the car where you can view your phone and all that sort of stuff. It's gone quite viral, actually. I've had about 10,000 downloads on the test flight. The code is on GitHub, but I'm going to show you how it works. Okay, so I'm here in the framework. So let's have a look at how CarPlay works. So first off, to get CarPlay, you have to request the entitlement from Apple. So, this is the key bit. So, I have a CarPlay entitlement, but the one I really want is the Maps one. Because if you read in one of these, displaying content in the car, it says here that if you have the Maps entitlement, you get access to this CP window property. So that stands for CarPlay window as opposed to like UI window or something like that. Um, otherwise, you have to use this function. So let me show you the code. Let's go to the code in the app. So this is the app. Code's available on GitHub. Um, this is the function they want you to use. So they want you to say that the template application scene did connect to Innovase Controller and then use some of their templates and doesn't give you access to any sort of window. Um, application scene. You can get a car window only if you have access to that correct entitlement. I don't have that. So in the test, in the simulator, when you're simulating this, quite simple. You could just put that in in the entitlements down here. You could just add the additional entitlement that you need. Excuse me. You add the additional entitlement and it works. But when you're trying to actually build it and send it out, it won't let you do that. So I looked at this, knowing that this function exists, I thought there's gotta be a way around this. So what I did is I went on to developer.apple.com and downloaded the um, pre-compiled iOS uh, restore images. That contains this. So in the system library cache, they have this thing called the DL DYLD shared cache. This is essentially where Apple put all of their shared frameworks and libraries and stuff like that. I've already opened it up in Hopper. It's a disassembler. I've opened the file up and I've searched for the function I want and found what I need. So this is what you're looking at here. If we actually go over here, is just some decompiled code. But if we go back to here, let's put it out in a nice graph. So the function that we're getting, let's see if I can find this. Give me 30 seconds. Okay, I can't find one. But anyway, I can talk you through it. So, essentially, we start up here at the root of the tree. It's attempting to create the um, window. Um, tempted to create the window, blah, 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 window will connect. 
app is ready to receive the interface. So we're, we're going to be told, we're going to call one of those two functions. So the options are you get this function called or you get this function called, depending on whether you have the entitlement. Um, app is ready to receive interface controller. So then it does some other stuff. It does some stuff. It checks. Here is the key bit. We're going to look at this bit in particular. Um, can I take this out of here? Yep, yeah, okay. Let's just let's leave it in here. So this is attempting to deliver interface controller to the delegate. So the delegate is essentially what controls, what calls these functions within the within this. So we're complying with the CP template application scene delegate. So that's this that's supposed to be this delegate CP template application scene delegate. So this goes through. And essentially attempts to deliver the controllers, so deliver, deli attempts to deliver us access to the view that we're loading. So it has laws, blah, 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 blah. This is key. So look at this. Let's hear it. So we're pull pulling R20, which is the delegate. So on self call should create car play window. If the response is True. If the response is true, or the result of this is true, go to this code block. Otherwise, continue processing down. So otherwise, it will continue coming down here, in which it will call this function, which essentially says that we're going to... Oh, no. Oh, no. Maybe no. No. Sorry. Sorry. This is false. This is if it's false. Because we're going to go to this only if this fails. But otherwise, go to here and call this function that says that, this, that the application, the CP template application scene method with window is supported. E.g. We're going to get told about this window property. So let's have a look at this. So, blah, blah, blah. Do some general framework logging. If this is all true, say we're going to support this, which we are, and then call R on R19. R19. If you go back up here, was argument not argument one. R19 is the result of this, so it must be some sort of view generation. Um, call template scene. Did connect to interface controller to window, producing the window function. I've not actually jumped into where this comes from because I wasn't really that interested. But otherwise, if we fail that, we're going to jump to here, which is down here somewhere. Three. Somewhere down here, anyway. Anyway, it would then call app carplay support simply with um, CP application C method without window. So essentially, if we don't. This variable here, this should create CarPlay window, controls whether we get a scene with a window property or whether we get a scene without a window property. And for what I'm doing in the car, essentially all I'm doing is putting a UI view in the car. If you're familiar with iOS, I'm hoping so because you're this far into the video. Um, we're just putting a UI view in the car. So to get to that UI view, to be able to render that, I need to have this window property. And as you can see here, I'm doing some window stuff. So we're extract, we're putting the root level as alert, blah, 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 blah. Saving it, making user interaction today, not enabled. User action, interaction doesn't work. It doesn't pass those details to the sub view. I don't know why. Uh, we're saving it. We're, I'm just printing these out just to test. And then, of course, later on, we're constructing stuff on that window as you've seen from the slight demo um so what i did was i came back to this i came back up here to where we've got this should this should create carplay window i looked at it so i was, let's search for this so let's go to the label process okay so cp template application scene should create carplay window should create up a window once, so I'll only call this once. Um, it's quite an interesting function. So essentially, I don't know what's calling it. 
it's referenced in a lot of places. It's referenced in a few places, anyway. But something is setting this to either be true or false, depending on whether you've got the entitlement. Hold on, let me see. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, whether you've got the entitlement or not to be able to view the window. So, as you can see here in my code, the template scene should create CarPlay window. This underscore should create CarPlay window, which is not exposed here. It's not exposed here in this function. Is being referenced in my code, and I'm not getting any compiler error. So if we jump to where this is being defined, I'm actually defining this in an Objective C. Is it Objective C? In a C, yeah, Objective C um, swizzle method that I'm on the interface of CP template application scene. So I'm swizzling that method to add this should create car play window boolean that allows me to say if there should be a window or not. But my issue is I can't call this when the car play window is initted, when it's rendered, because by that point it's already too late and I've already missed creating the window. So what I need to do, let's think it's down in this one, yeah, is it up here, yeah, in this CP application scene, CP template application scene, on a, lo on, a, on a load of the function into the system, the class, we're going to do what's known as swizzling. So swizzling is a method that's very, very available in Objective-C. Not, it's not really that possible in Swift. But essentially allows you to replace the references and the code surrounding certain... Um, functions and variables and stuff to make them do different things. So when this loads, we're going to dispatch this once. Um, we're going to get the original selector, so we're looking for a should create car play window with this underscore. Um, and then we've got this swizzled selector. I've created these two functions down here. Um, and then what we're going to do is get the original and get the swizzled method and then we're going to say here that we want to change the implementation Oh, no, no, that's down here. We're going to exchange the implementation down here. So essentially, what anything that calls should create car play window is now going to call XYZ underscore should create car play window. And anything that called XYZ underscore should create car play window will call should create car play window. They technically um, still call the same functions, just the actual implementation has been reversed. So down here, X, Y, Z should create a couple of window, returns the custom logic of yes. It's Boolean value, yes. And if you call the public should create car play window, we return the value of that. Essentially, I've made it so that when the system does this check that it looked at, I'm not going to find this. Uh -huh. Reference to this. Uh, this. Nope, not that one. Somewhere in here, I've got a reference. Hold on. Yeah, so in here, when it calls this and does this, essentially we're going to make it return back what we want it to return. Instead of it returning false or doing the entitlement check against the application we're just going to make sure it always returns true so that then means that we follow this chain down assuming that's true which is in this bit of logic here we come over here app support cp template application scene with window blah 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 Where is it? It's not here. But essentially, then we get delivered the... Oh, it's here. We then get delivered this to window method and render a window. We then have access to this CP window, which if you jump into what CP window is, essentially, it's an extract... It's, a, it's an open class on UI window. Um, 
it just adds some parameters about the template application scene that created it and something to do with map buttons safe area layout guide neither of those I'm going to be interested in now that we have this window we make reference to it locally and then we save the window to a shared object so we can access it later um, and then I have this function so essentially in the app if you've used the app um, you can screen share your thing and it will look and it will play it in the car but all that actually does if we jump down here is ignore all this this is just some dynamic loading is allows this sets the window interaction true creates a view controller on the windows root view controller um then sets the background to black and it's a content mode with the aspect ratio you've picked uh Uh, root view controller adds the image view that we're generating to this um, translates the auto resizing makes it fit the screen blah 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 this has been when this is added to the root view controller that essentially makes it appear in the car on the screen and then we just put whatever content we want it because what this is meant for is when you're looking like, like Apple Maps or Google Maps or Way something like that they're drawing a map aren't they that requires more customization of the view than you can get from a standard um, template. Because, of course, in the CarPlay, you're only supposed to use the CarPlay templates. But this allows me to bypass this, even without having the entitlement. I'm sure at some point this will get patched by Apple. But right now, they probably don't care. Because you still have to have a CarPlay entitlement to be able to get the app to appear on the screen. I haven't worked that bit out yet, but this removes the requirement to get the maps entitlement, which is very heavily guarded by Apple then, unless you've got a really strong use case, they're not giving you that entitlement. Um, I don't think I've got anything else to tell you about this. Um, no, I don't really. So thank you, hope you've enjoyed, hope you found this interesting. Um, yeah, the app's available in GitHub. There is a beta, there is a test flight beta, it's currently full. I'm working on getting some more people into it by making another test flight beta. So, otherwise, if you get a CarPlay entitlement from Apple, the other one's quite simple to get. Get one of them, get it downloaded, get it installed, run it, and I hope you enjoy. Thank you.